In this video, I will show you how to go from this to this. So first off, you want your attack to be instantaneous. In your code, it would look something like this. I mean my player object. First, you want to reduce the attack cooldown every step. And then as soon as the player presses the attack input, and when the cooldown is at zero, you want to create the hitbox instantaneously. And then you can play the sound of the attack and reset the cooldown to its initial value. Next, we want to add some sounds when the enemy collides with the player hitbox and when he collides with the spikes. So first, let's go into the player hitbox object and into the collision with the enemy event. And in that event, we want to check if the enemy is dead. And if he is not dead, we are going to play a sound. And then this code is just the code that pushes the enemy. Next, we are going to go into the trap object and in the collision with the enemy event, we are just going to add the same code. Basically, if the trap deals damage and if the enemy isn't dead, we play our sound and we set the enemy to dead. Now we are going to add a hit effect. So I drew this simple effect in Krita, which has three frames. And you want to export that as a sprite sheet and import it into GameMaker. And then once you're in Game Maker, create a new object. And this object is going to have only one event, which is the animation end event, which is only going to contain instance destroy. So basically we're going to create this effect every time the enemy collides with the hitbox or with the spikes. And this effect is going to automatically disappear once it's over. So let's go back to our player hitbox object in the same event as before, the collision with the enemy. And then we are just going to add a little bit of code that will create our new object when the enemy collides with the, the hitbox and we'll give it a random image angle which will make it look a little bit more natural. Make sure to create the effect on the position of the enemy and not on the position of the hitbox. Then copy this code and we're going back to our trap object which is our spikes. In the collision with the enemy, we're going to copy and paste the code here. Next, we're going to add some screen shake to the game. To do that, we'll need to modify our camera object. So first, go to your camera object and go in the create event and you're going to need to initialize three variables that will control the amount of screen shake that will apply to the camera's position. Next, we're going in the step event of the camera. So basically right now, this code just centers the camera in the room. We're going to add a few more lines of code that will modify the position that we set the camera at depending on the three vari variables that we set in the create event. So these two lines of code center the camera in the room. And these two lines of code will add some random number depending on the amount of screen shake that we have applied. And then we have a small formula that will reduce the amount of screen shake applied until it reaches zero. Next, we need to have a function that we can call in other objects to to apply some screen shake. So I created a function called screen shake that contains this. You basically give it two arguments, which is first the magnitude and second the frames, basically the amount of time that the screen shake will go on for. And this is the strength of the screen shake. And then we just set the three variables depending on these arguments. So now we can call this function where we want to apply some screen shake. So we're going to apply it in our hitbox object, in the same event as before, and when it collides with the enemy. Just after playing the sound, we're going to apply a small screen shake. And then we can copy this code and apply it when the spikes collide with the enemy as well. Next, we're going to add some particles. I have created my own custom particles by simply drawing them in Krita and importing them into GameMaker. But there's also a bunch of default particles that you can use. So I made one that's a little ball and another one that's like a little smoke. Now that we have the sprites of our particles, we want to cr create a particle system. And I'll do that in my O game object that initializes variables and stuff. So go to the create event of your game object and then we're going to set some variables. So here I create a particle system, then I assign it a depth at which the particles will be drawn, and then I create my two particles, and then I create an emitter in that particle system. The functions I use to create my particles look like this. 
I set the color of the particle and the duration of the particle thanks to the arguments that I give it. And then I just set the sprite of the particle I'm creating, which is the sprite I, I made earlier in Krita. Then I set the scale, the size, I set the color, the transparency, the speed and the direction of the particle, and then the duration of the particle, how long it would last in my game before it disappears. And then I return the particle. The other function is basically the same. We could probably just have one function and more arguments to avoid repeating the same lines of code. And then just like for our screen shake effect, we need to have a function that we can call whenever we want to display our blood effect. So for that, I created a burst function which takes a few arguments. The first two arguments are there to determine the position of where we'll be displaying our effect. And the third argument will be the size of our effect. So in this function, we just get our game object, which contains our particle system. And then we set the region at which we want to display our effect. And then we burst a few particles in that region. Finally, we want to call that burst function when our enemy collides with the spikes. So we go back to our trap object in the collision with the enemy and we'll just add the function here. Next, we want our enemy to flash white when we hit it and when it hits the spikes. So to do that, we'll use a simple shader. So you can just create a new shader and you'll end up with something like this. All we need to do is to go to the .fsh file and then add a line of code. I have no idea how to code shaders, but I suppose it overrides the drawing of the of our object with a fully white image. And then we need to call this shader when the enemy gets hit. So let's go into the draw event of the enemy object. And here we'll set up a new variable called taking damage, which will be decremented every step. And if that variable is above zero, we'll set our shader and then we'll draw our enemy and then we'll reset the shader. And if it's below or at zero, we'll just draw our enemy normally. Now all we need to do for our enemy to flash white is, is to set the taking damage variable to a value above zero when the enemy collides with our hitbox or with the traps. So let's go back to the collision with the enemy event in the player hitbox object. And then here we can just put other dot taking damage equal five. And we can do the same thing in our trap collision with the enemy. But actually, have you noticed that we are copying and passing a lot of code between this event and the other event? So we could just create a function that contains all of these effects and we can just call this function here and here. So we only have to write the code once. So let's take this little line of code and put it at the end because we don't want this one in both events. And then we can just take all of this code, create a new function called display hit effects, and then pa paste all of the code here, and then go back to the previous event, and then call this function instead. We're going to call this function in the hitbox collision with the enemy as well. Let's delete all the code that's inside the function, and put the function here. Next, we want the body of the enemy to bounce on the spikes when it dies. So in the collision with the enemy, in the trap object, we're going to add another condition that checks if the enemy is dead. And if that's the case, we're just going to knock him back. Also, don't forget to put some sort of variable that will be turned on when this happens so that this doesn't happen multiple times. My knockout function looks like this. So we basically just set a duration, a strength and a direction. And then we set a variable in the enemy object that will tell it to override the usual movement with the knockout movement. And we set the X speed and the Y speed of the enemy to be the direction and the strength that we set in the function. You want to call a similar function when the enemy is hitting a wall and make him bounce in a random direction. The function I use that checks for collisions is a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to detail it here. But basically, when your enemy meets a wall, you want to reverse its speed and play a sound. Next, we want to add some sort of permanent visual effect when the spike has killed an enemy. So I'm going on my O spikes object. When it collides with an enemy, we're just going to change its sprite to be a sprite of the spikes with some blood. 
Finally, you want to add a lot of enemies in your room so that the player can kill a lot of them at once. Basically, the definition of juice is that for the least amount of input from the player, there is a maximum amount of outputs on the screen. So usually the more enemies you will have, the more satisfying it will feel to kill them and to play your game. You could definitely make it work without implementing all these things. Your game will be functional, but it just won't be as fun. So I highly encourage you to do this, even if it takes a little bit more time.